on this rock with Brother Jonathan T. Carter uh, here on Spradlin Promotions. That means it is Monday night, it is the 25th, and it is Memorial Day. Uh, I tell you, uh, that means a lot. Uh, those that have uh, uh, that we've lost, those that have gone on before us, uh, just taking the the time to uh, remember and and uh, be thankful for the lessons they've taught us, uh, for the things they've showed us along the way. Uh, can I tell you that truly uh, we have been blessed? Truly, uh, I can say that. God has given us more than we could have ever asked for, uh, more than we could ever, uh, ever thank him for. Uh, and this is another day, another day that God has blessed us with, another day that God has made. And uh, so I'm thankful to be here tonight, uh, to be able to be with you all, um, to be able to just share uh, what the Lord uh, has put upon our hearts yet again tonight. Um, I know that I tell you what, it was so sunny this morning, beautiful. Uh, we came out here and we sat on the porch with uh, our family and uh, my wife, Amanda, uh, read a storybook to our, to our kids, uh, uh, read one of their books to them there, and, and we were just enjoying the time together. Um, and then it went and rained a little bit, and now it's a little, little cooler, a little darker. Uh, but can I tell you right now, uh, the Spirit of God is still... Uh, with us and still able to bless and uh, to give us uh, our needs uh, as we uh, spoke about last night that God will provide your needs through his riches and glory and I'm so thankful uh, I'm so thankful for the Lord for all that he does for us I'm so thankful for his many many blessings and his love that he shows us uh, time and time again uh, so we're just out here uh, this evening normally we're in our room there um, but tonight we just wanted to try to do something a little different, uh, something that we've done before in the past, just be out here on this front porch and out here in this just beautiful, beautiful, uh, blessing, uh, that God has given us this view that we have. Um, you know, I can truly tell you that, that God has blessed us and thankful to be able to be here tonight, uh, uh, to share with you all. Uh, I tell you, um, Today we had some wonderful time with our family, uh, being able to spend some time with them. Um, you know, I, I'm uh, I'm humbled and thankful uh, to be able to spend time with my family uh, because you know I'm, I'm blessed far more than I deserve. You know, I've got I've got a beautiful wife and children uh, that God has given me that I can say that honestly I don't deserve them. Uh, I don't know uh, why it is that He has blessed me so, but I am still very very thankful uh that he has done this uh and, and I, I mean it i tell you uh just to have the family that i have and uh the love that christ has shown me uh means so very much to me uh i could never thank him enough and i could never give him enough praise uh but i sure want to try to dedicate my life uh, to doing just that to serving him to praising him and to doing all that i can do to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, that I might be able to share with one lost soul. You know, I mean, honestly, uh, you know, whether you're, you're uh, a minister, that you have a congregation of, of several thousand, or whether you have just a few uh, uh, people standing in your church, uh, whether you're one that preaches to a congregation of, of 50 or 50,000, uh, you know, the the, the message is still the same uh the the intent should still be the same and and that intent is to to share with one lost soul uh the fact that jesus christ bled and died for them and and the fact that uh they don't have to live their life uh, in sin and shame and sorrow if they'd give it all over to him if they'd give it all over to christ jesus uh, then they can have life eternal and life with him forevermore can i tell you tonight uh, i know that as I, as I studied and as i prayed and I, as i asked lord what would you want me to speak to him tonight um you know, and he just brought a, a thought back to me uh, that I've had before, a thought that I've prayed on before and, and uh, uh, sought his face before about, uh, uh, but he brought it back to my mind tonight, and, and I, I just want to share with you uh, what God has put on my heart, but I just want to take some time uh, to just say thank you. Thank you all who continue to, to uh, tune in, who continue to, to 
uh, watch and, and uh, bless our hearts just by being a part and, and being here with us. Uh, those that uh, continue to just uh, tune in to, to support uh, uh, the, the prayer request, you know, time and time again, I tell you all that, you know, we read the requests, we read the, the comments, and we truly do. And I tell you, it's a blessing each and every time uh, to look over the comments, uh, the things that people have said. Um, you know, I can I can say this, though. You know, for those people who say, oh, you preached a wonderful message. The message wasn't mine, and, and anything good from it definitely didn't come from me, but it came from the Lord. And, uh, you know, if there's something, mistakes made, then, yeah, you can point those my way. I'm sure I did it. Uh, but I tell you what, I'm thankful for my Lord and my God. Uh, are you thankful for your Lord tonight? Are you thankful uh, for the God we serve? Because can I tell you, I am, I tell you. Uh, I know you might be thinking, well, Brother John, uh, are you still thankful even in the midst of this uh, coronavirus, even in the midst of these people being sick and, and people facing this and that and trials and troubles and adversities? Or are you still thankful for God tonight? Uh, can I tell you I'm still thankful tonight? Ain't that right, Brother Thomas? Uh, uh, you know, no matter what we face, uh, we can still be thankful for the Lord and for the love He's shown us. Uh, we can still be thankful uh, for the blessings that God has shared with us uh, you know, as we sit here tonight on this Memorial Day, uh, I can tell you, uh, you know, I know that many have went on before us, uh, but can I tell you right now, uh, uh, if we do, if we just uh, uh, let what they've done uh, just go away and fade away, then truly uh, they're lost to us. Uh, but can I tell you right now, uh, if we take the time uh, to be thankful for uh, the lessons they taught us, listen, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about our servicemen and women, I'm talking about uh, our military, I'm talking about our... Our, uh, our army, our, our navy, air force, marines. I'm talking about uh, firefighters and police officers and, and rescue squad and EMTs. Uh, I'm talking about doctors and nurses. And I'm talking about I'm talking about all those that serve in the medical field. I'm talking about uh, those that have uh, uh, showed us the way uh, to serve God. Can I tell you right now? Listen, I'm I'm thankful for the lessons uh, uh, that that men and women of God have taught me before. I'm thankful. Uh, for the lessons uh, that my pastor has shown me, that that uh, you know his pastor has shown him and and shown me as well. Listen, I tell you right now, I'm thankful for the people that I've come up under. Can I tell you right now, I'm I'm thankful for those uh, that took the time to share with me uh, what it meant to, to serve God, uh, what it meant to, to take the time and and to talk to a, a, just a, a silly old Christian boy or just a silly old a uh, simple boy. Uh, but they, they they took the time to tell me something. Uh, that was important. That one one day I would take and I would share that with someone else. Uh, can I tell you right now? There's lessons uh, that my pastor, Brother Jeremy Carter, taught me uh, that I'm I'm learning and I'm teaching to this day. Uh, there's lessons that uh, coming up under Brother Danny Patrick here in Scottsville, Kentucky, over at East, East Willow Street Church of God. Listen, there's lessons that he taught me that I still lean on today. Uh, there's things, uh, praise God, uh, that Brother Bill Kinslow, uh, who who uh, was a pastor over there at Samson Street Church of God in Glasgow, Kentucky for many, many years. Uh, he's went on to be with the Lord today, but can I tell you, the love he showed me as a child still rings true in my heart, and I still uh, reminisce on the times that we spent together and the love he showed me. You know, I think about it, uh, you know, I told my wife, I said, uh, uh, I told her, I've told her before, I said, you know, uh, it seems like we was family before we was family, uh, because uh, uh, men like him uh, who showed me love and care, uh, who, who took the time to tell me, praise God, how much uh, I meant to them. Uh, can I tell you right now, uh, uh, it, it's so wonderful and such a blessing, praise God, uh, to think on those people that have drawn, that have made a way, uh, that have, that have uh, uh, walked us down these paths of life uh, closer to God. Can I tell you right now, I'm thankful for them. Uh, and I and I tell you what, those that have went on before us, I'm thankful that my pastor is still alive and well. Praise God. Uh, I'm thankful that Brother Danny Patrick's still alive and well. Uh, uh, now, Brother Bill Kinslow, uh, 
Brother Bill has went on to be with the Lord, but I'll tell you right now, I know where he's at. Uh, I know he's went on to be with the Lord, can I tell you. Uh, listen, I know uh, uh, Sister Debbie Patrick has went on to be with the Lord, but the lesson she taught me, you listen, if you're out there and you're just a Sunday school teacher, I want to I say first off, take that just out of the way. Uh, uh, you, when you say I'm just a Sunday school teacher, listen, you're not just a Sunday school teacher. You make a difference in some child's life. Uh, can I tell you right now, And no matter what age group you teach, uh, no matter what age group you, comes into your classroom, I don't care if you're teaching uh, uh, the little children in a preschool class, uh, if all y'all do is color and talk about Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Listen, can I tell you right now, it makes a difference. Uh, don't just say, I'm just a Sunday school teacher. Listen, one day uh, when that person, uh, when that young man, young woman uh, has grown uh, to be a teenager or to be a young adult uh, and they're out there in the world uh, and the devil's fighting them uh, and the devil's coming against them and they're sitting there thinking, what should I do next? Uh, how should I go forward? Uh, how should I step into this or step out of that? Where should I go? Uh, what should I do? Uh, they'll think back to the lessons. Uh, uh, they'll say, wait a second. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. Listen, you say, John, that's silliness. That ain't going to help nobody. Can I tell you right now, if you think it's silliness, you're being silly. Can I tell you right now, that makes a difference in somebody's life. When you tell them that Jesus loves them, when they think they're unlovable, when you tell them that somebody is fighting for them, praise God, can I tell you, I want I want you to know tonight that no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're facing, can I tell you that God is there and he is ready and he is able. Can I tell you tonight, just as it said many, many times before, Jesus loves you. Praise God. Can I tell you all the way back in the book of Proverbs, he tells us that there is one that is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Can I tell you right now, you think that, oh, uh, uh, what does that make a difference to me? Can I tell you right now, do you not know the song that we teach children? What a friend we have. In Jesus. Listen, church, uh, it's time we remember that we have a friend in Jesus. It's time we remember. Listen, and I tell you right now, if you are going to be a friend, uh, you must first show yourself friendly. There's a lot of people that forget that part uh, and they don't feel like being friendly. And then they start being uh, rude or mean or spiteful or hateful. And I tell you right now, Christian, listen, I'm going to get on your toes. Be ready. Either pull them back or just take it like a man. Can I tell you right now? Listen, uh, I tell you right now. If you are a Christian and you're acting hateful to people, you need to check yourself because something has gone astray. Can I tell you right now, if you're being hateful, if you're not spreading the love of Jesus Christ, then you are not doing what you are called to do. Whether you're just a Sunday school teacher, just a song leader, whether you're just an usher. Listen, dude, stop saying just. Can I tell you right now, you are more than a conqueror. You are more than an overcomer. How are we made more, more than overcomers? We're made overcomers by the the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Can I tell you right now, if the Bible says that you are a conqueror and an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony, then it's time you testify what God has done for you. It's time that you go back to the word of God and apply the blood to your heart and to your life. What blood can I tell you right now? As we sit here on Memorial Day, we talk about that beautiful flag that flies high over the United States. And I tell you right now, you may not may you may not like it, you may not honor it, you may not care about it, but I tell you right now, that red, white, and blue flag means something to me. Can I tell you right now, it tells me about the red blood that was shed for me, and I'm not just talking about our soldiers, but I'm talking about my Savior, who bled and died for me. Can I tell you right now, oh, Jesus, I tell you, church, listen, that blood doesn't run, them colors don't run, and, and they don't fade. Can I tell you right now, that blood is applied to your heart and to your life. Praise God. Hold it up true and honor it every day can i tell you right now listen don't just uh don't just wave an american flag on memorial day or on fourth of july and say i'm an american i'm an american can i tell you right now if you're not an american 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year then don't be trying to make up for it two days of the year don't be trying to make up for it one day a year don't try to make up for it uh just on sundays and just on uh midweek services can i tell you right now it's about time that you get in the word of god and you be a, you be a Christian all the time. 
You said, John, you just you just transitioned, didn't you? He said, American, and then you went to Christian. Listen, I tell you right now, what do we come to this country for? Let's go back to the basics. Uh, listen, uh, yes, we came here uh, because we were being uh, because uh, our founding fathers were being oppressed. They were being taken advantage of. Things were happening that shouldn't have been happening, and they came here uh, to set out for a new world, a new land. Uh, and here they were, and they tried to start out by praising Jesus Christ, uh, their Lord and Savior, and they try to do it the right way. Did they always do things right? No. Did they make a lot of mistakes? Yes. Can I tell you right now that our founding fathers are without sin or fault? No. But can I tell you I'm not either? Mm-hmm. And neither are you. Listen, none of us are without fault or without sin or without blemish. None of us are perfect. None of us are sitting here tonight saying that we can sit, uh, cast the first stone. Do you remember the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery? As the, as the people of the day, as the, the Pharisees, Sadducees, as they brought that woman and they cast her down before Jesus, caught in the very act of adultery, they said uh, uh, that the, the law of Moses says that she should be stoned. Jesus didn't disagree. He didn't correct them. He didn't tell them, oh, go away, you, you dirty dogs. But he said to them, that's fine, that's right. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And I cannot tell you tonight, those boys couldn't cast no rocks. Uh, listen, can I tell you right now, they couldn't cast no rocks because they had sin in their hearts, sin in their lives. They had things in their hearts uh, that they knew would find them out. Listen, if you being uh, if you being slick, you think you're getting away with it. You think your sin that's done in the dark uh, won't be brought to light. Can I tell you, the Bible says that which is done in the darkness will be brought to light. Uh, can I tell you right now, he said that uh, the children of this world uh, were lovers of darkness rather than lovers of light uh, because they didn't want their deeds uh, that were wicked to be brought to reproach. Uh, they didn't want people to know what they've been doing. You say, Brother John, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the love of Jesus. I'm talking about the love of Jesus that was taught to me, not just by word, but by example. I'm talking about the love of Jesus that was shown to me time and time again when I didn't deserve it and when I couldn't have earned it, when I couldn't have paid for it, bought it, or even made a request because I wasn't worthy. Can I tell you, I wasn't worthy to walk before the throne of God, but for some reason, there were Christians out there that were willing to put their neck on the line for a sinner like me. And they said, hey, I'll vouch for him. Hey, uh, let's let him come on to church. Hey, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll sit beside John. I'll pray with him. I'll get in the altar with him. Can I tell you, there's been people that have turned their backs on me over the years, saying that I was no good, or, or saying that I, I went soft. Can I tell you right now, listen, I didn't go soft, but I got saved. I didn't get weak, but praise God, I found out what meekness, what power meekness truly had. And y'all don't understand what they're talking about, do you? <laughs> See, there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And that's my Savior. That's my Jesus. You say, John, that was in the book of Proverbs. It sure was. It sure was in the book of Proverbs where he said there was a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Praise God. Uh, uh, that was all the way over in the book of Proverbs chapter 18. In verse 24, it says, A man that hath friends must shew it himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. But you know, over in the book of John, chapter 15, and uh, let's, let's lead, read over to that. Uh, John 15. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I done skipped it. There we go. John 15. We're going to start in the 13. Da, 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 da. He said... These things I have spoken unto you. We're, we're at John 15, verse 11. John 15, verse 11. You hear me now? John 15, verse 11. He says, These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that you, that your joy may be filled, may be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. He said, Greater love hath no man than this, uh, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do whatsoever, I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I called you friends. 
For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Can I tell you tonight, uh, listen, you may think uh, that you're not good enough. You may think uh, that you can't make a difference. You may think uh, that what in the world can you do? What in the world uh, can can uh, little old Thomas Spradlin do all the way down in Florida? What, what can uh, Sister Rebecca Steenbergen do here in little Scottsville, Kentucky? Oh, what, what, can, what can this one do? What can that one do? Can I tell you right now, Sister Kelly all the way over in Australia? Can I tell you right now, ooh, Jesus, can I tell you right now, wherever you're at, no matter what you think you are, stop saying just, you ain't just this and just that. Listen, praise God, say, I am a Christian, I am more than a conqueror, I am more than an overcomer, I am more, praise God, than this world can handle, understand, grasp, or even mention, I am more. Why am I more? Because, praise God, my Jesus said that the thief cometh not before to steal, kill, and destroy but i have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly praise god tonight i'm thankful that i have the love of jesus christ dwelling within my soul i'm thankful praise god that he didn't just stop at saving me i'm thankful praise god he didn't just stop part of the way i'm thankful praise god that he said i see something in you and i'm going to use it but what about you what about you yeah you no 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 you no 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 you right there. Yeah, yeah, you in the red shirt. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Listen. Listen, put that down for a second. I want you to hear this. You right there. You you sitting down in the blue shirt. Yeah, you. I'm talking to you. Listen. You right there. You in, Are you in your pajamas? I'm talking to you anyway. Listen to me now. You think that you can't make a difference. You think that there's nothing... Remotely within your power or ability to, to change in this world. You think that because you've been told this your whole life, that nothing's going to change, nothing's going to make a difference, uh, there's nothing remotely that you can do. But can I tell you this? My Jesus came to seek and save that's what, that which is lost. He came to find uh, that one lost sheep. Uh, Praise God out in the wilderness. Oh, he came to make a way. My grandpa used to sing a song called Child, Child. He'd say, Child, Child, oh, why do you wander out in the darkness? Away from the fool. It's a child, child. There's comfort in closeness. So walk just as close as you can. Listen. If you're sitting there this beautiful Memorial Day. And you've got your family around you. Listen, don't sit there and don't be fussing because we ain't quarantined. Be thankful that the people you love is right with you. And if you're not able to see your grandkids or your children, if, if for some reason this quarantine has separated you from your loved ones, then can I tell you right now, take a second to realize that you are there with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and you're not alone. Can I tell you tonight, if you take a notice and realize that you're not alone, but who stands with you is, is the Creator and the, the, the Son, is, is the Spirit of God, all three in one, they're there with you, praise God, to lift you up, to help you, and to see you through. If you see that, and you realize that not just are you not alone. Not just are you just uh, uh, getting by. But praise God. You are more. More. Because he loves you. My savior is a more God. You say what do you mean a more God? I mean he's not just. Just. The one that created the heavens and the earth. He's not just the one that saw the children of Israel out of bondage from Egypt 
through the wilderness and across Jordan. He's not just the one who delivered judges and kings and taught those kings to be the kings they needed to be and forgave them when they fell short. But through that bloodline of the kings, he delivered a savior. And he's not just one that died for the cause. He is the only one who died for the cause and rose himself back up. You see, my Jesus said, no man taketh my life, but I freely give it. I'll lay it down and I'll pick it back up again. No man can say that. I look at all those that have went on before us to prepare the way for us. John said that he is not the light, but a witness of the light. Trying to tell people that Jesus was coming. I guess I'm just trying to live up to my namesake. You know what I mean? John said, I just want to tell y'all that he's coming. The one that comes after me, he said, I'm not even worthy to latch his shoes. He said, I'm not even worthy to touch his shoes. I tell you, I'm not even worthy to touch my Jesus' shoes. But I tell you right now, listen. I know that those that have went on before us, uh, that have blazed these pathways before us, uh, and I, can I tell you right now, uh, those that have taught us in the way before us, uh, listen, I'm not going to let what they've taught me uh, go to waste. Uh, I'm not going to let those lessons, uh, praise God, as I talked about. Listen, I said earlier, don't just say you're just a Sunday school teacher. Can I tell you right now, I'm thankful for the Sunday school teachers I've had. Uh, can I tell you right now, when I gave my heart and life back to Jesus Christ, and I recommitted my, my effort to, and I recommitted my soul to Jesus and, and I said, I want to do what you want me to do. And I needed somebody to teach me and to show me the way. Oh, praise God. I'm thankful. Sister Debbie Patrick didn't just say, I'm just a Sunday school teacher. But she got my life. She got my heart. She showed me the way. She showed me how to serve Jesus sacrificially. She showed me how to how to serve him when you are sick, to serve him when you do feel down, when you do feel weak. Uh, if you got a little bit of voice, go ahead and give it to him. Listen, she showed me these things. Uh, people like my grandpa Willis, uh, who would sing and play the guitar until the strings broke off, uh, until his voice went out, uh, and they'd praise him anyway. Oh, praise God. Listen, can I tell you right now, I want to show you love tonight, like those that have showed me. Like those that have shown me. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever should believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Said that God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The Bible said in the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 42, as Jesus was praying, he knelt down and he's saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He chose love over fear. He chose you over himself. You say, what do you mean? I mean, my Jesus chose to die for you. Listen, I'm saying right now, he more than just died for you. He chose to die for you. He gave everything to die for you. He said, listen, no, listen, you right there, you, uh, Merle Blankenship, I'm dying for you. That's what he said. Listen, he said, Matt Patrick, I'm dying for you. Thomas Bradlin, I'm dying for you. Listen, he said, I'm dying for you. Jennifer Brown, he said, I'm dying for you. Why? Because he loves you. 
Now, he wasn't going to stop halfway. The Bible says that as he walked up that hill to Golgotha, that he fell under the weight of that cross. His body was was broken and, and beaten and, and he was weakened. It said that Simon the Cyrenian, if I'm not mistaken, stepped up and helped him. Bore that cross with him. He got to the top. And he hung there between two malefactors, two criminals. A lot of times, when you go to different places, you'll see flags flying. And I don't know why, maybe it's because I'm a weirdo. But when I see those flags flying, I picture my Jesus. In between two malefactors. No, by the way, I am not saying any other country is a malefactor. I'm not trying to pick on any other flag that, that's flying. I'm just saying I'm a weirdo and, and that's what I see in my head. I see him hanging there though. His body. Racked with pain. And his blood trickling down the rough-hewn lumber of the cross. That rough wood rubbing against fresh wounds as only I can imagine he said I see you there. You in the red shirt. You sitting there in the blue shirt. You, you still got your pajamas on. I see you. And I'm willing to die for you. I'm willing to die for you. Can I tell you tonight? He said, you, you are worth dying for. He went to the cross to set you free. If it was just you, he would have still done it. Why? Because he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He said... No greater love hath any man than this, that he would lay down his life for a friend. He said, I no longer call you servants, but friends. I want to say, it's a beautiful evening we have here together, friends. And I'm thankful to share it with you. At this time, I'm going to ask if anybody has any prayer requests. And I'll tell you right now, even if your prayer requests, even if your prayer requests is 